Welcome to Refresh. This is Pastor Kim Robinson. It's my desire that you listen, that you can experience blessed faith and creative life with this Kicks Ministries and Victory Harvest Church podcast. Hi, this is Pastor Kim with the Refresh podcast. This podcast title is Lego Faith. You know, hope is future and faith is now. Faith is the evidence of things hoped for. Let me say that again. Hope is future and faith is now. See, your faith is in this moment and your hope believes for your future. We've got to let the word do the work and you do the rest. That is, you rest in the rest of God. We can experience rest and experience Lego faith as we live faith by love and live love by faith. Set it all to rest. Embrace his words and faith rises. It's like water refreshing the ground and the beauty of the earth is displayed in its growth. We all need refreshed in the word to grasp the power of the word. Proverbs 18.10 says this, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and are safe. See, his name is the tower of his word. This Hebrew word for tower means elevated and it means a castle and a kingdom. The name of the Lord is the kingdom of his word. And it is the elevation of his faith, and it is the tower of his strength. In Revelation 19, 13, it says this, that Jesus' name is called the word of God. When we use his name, and every time we call on his name, every time we think of his name, we can know that the word says it is the name above every name. And we can know that we are speaking the word of God in full and confirming it by his name. Just saying the name of Jesus has within it the entire word of God from Genesis to Revelation, and you are speaking it completely just by uttering the name of Jesus. This name is the authority of faith. And what is the authority of his word? It is the authority of his name. And you are speaking his blessing by speaking his name. Because again, in Revelation 19, 13, it says this, And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the word of God. He has blessed us with his blood covenant, and he is giving his blessing to us through his resurrection. The same spirit that raised him from the dead quickens us, and we experience the fullness of his resurrection life. We experience the fullness of Jesus. We experience the fullness of his glory. We experience the fullness of his word. In Psalm 23, it says this, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. This word, Lord, is the exaltation of the Lord of Lords, the Lord who is Lord God, Jehovah, the all existing one. He declares that he is our shepherd. You know, when he fed the multitude, he brought them into a pasture. He took five loaves and two fish. He looked up, he took the gift, he blessed it, and he gave it to his disciples. And this gift was a gift from a boy. He took that childlike faith and he was able to bless that gift. And again, he gave it to his disciples. And he said, you give them those people that are come here sitting in this pasture to this shepherd, the bread, and you give them the fish. You feed them the bread of life. Bring them the meat of God. He was establishing that there was no lack to the people, and it was him as a shepherd feeding a flock. He was establishing that we can be those who bring the bread of life to others. Because in this scripture, Psalm 23, verse 1, it reads in Hebrew, we shall have no lack. And he is our shepherd. We have no lack because we are in Jehovah Rohe. He is the word of God manifesting no lack in our lives. You know, the word shepherd here means to pasture, to tend, to rule, to teach, to feed, to graze, to associate with, to be a companion with, to keep company with, to be a friend. These are the things that he does for us. He is our companion. He keeps company with us. He is our friend. He is associating with us. And as we touch him, we touch the word of God. And as we touch the word of God, we are touching the only existing one Jehovah, who is called the word of God, and we shall not want. Again, this word means we shall have no lack. And it makes me think of the woman with the issue of blood. 
where she said in Mark 5, 28, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. When we touch him, we are touching the word. When we touch the word, we are touching him. And another translation, it says, she touched the hem of his garment. This word hem is the finished work of God. And he is completing it in us and for us as we accept him. Our faith is connecting with the word of God and our faith connecting with him and our faith connecting with his name, Jesus, the name above every name, who is the word of God, changes things. It moves things around. The word of God, precept upon precept, line upon line, is building and building as we speak and pray in our lives. With this woman, the issue of blood here, she pressed through. She had an issue and she pressed through it. You know, faith presses and reaches through the crowd. Faith touches God and it is personal. Never lose yourself in the crowd. Your faith holds the focus of a personal Jesus. In Mark 5, 24 through 34, it reads this. And Jesus went with him and much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman who had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all she had and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and saith thou, Who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. See, in this scripture, it says clearly, for she said. That phrase in the Greek is the word lego. This word lego means a continuous saying saying it over and over as in the parable of the unjust judge, where it says in Luke 18, 5, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. As you press through the crowd and as you go beyond the issues, these are unjust things in your life. They are not things given by the Lord. They go contrary to the word. But in Luke 18, 5, it shows that her continual persistence, as with this Lego faith, she turned this unjust situation. And the Lord showed how much more he would respond to Lego faith. He says he will come speedily and he will move speedily and he brings no lack. He is the living word of God. He is the shepherd and he desires to move with your faith. It says in Luke eighteen seven, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? In verse eight, it goes on and says, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the son of man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? He is looking for your faith. As we recognize, you know, Lego sets, we can look at how they keep building and building and they design and make things. And this word describes this clearly in Mark five. It says here where the woman with the issue of blood said, if I but say, you know, it's keyed here with Luke 18, where she kept saying, and this woman in Luke 18 kept saying, and in Mark 5, the woman with the issue of blood was touching the finished work of God. And here it says that God will avenge his elect and he will avenge them speedily. And that work was done in her as she touched Jesus with her faith. She was touching the Lamb of God who shed his blood, that we could experience his blessing in the fullness of his salvation. She was experiencing the virtue of God. And again, as it says in Revelation 19, 13, he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the word of God. He is that shepherd that has promised us no lack. And as she kept saying, she kept speaking. She believed the word and faith and her action received the manifestation of the promised word of the blessing that Jesus brought. In the Greek, that word lego, when she kept speaking, is a verb. 
It's defined to properly lay forth in relation to words. It's defined in Greek as a system and a set discourse, meaning a continual speaking. Well, this system means that it is done or it is acting according to a fixed plan and a fixed system. That is the word of God. See, there is a system and a fixed plan according to the spoken word of God, and that is according to the finished work of God. And just as we release our faith as this woman spoke, and we do the same, which is the word Lego, she was tapping into Jesus. She was tapping into the finished work of God. She was tapping into the word of God, and she was continually speaking. And Mark 5, 28, for she said, Lego, Lego, meaning a set discourse defined as a written or spoken communication or a debate but more importantly, to speak or write authoritatively about a topic. This discourse was a bold speaking and it debated that situation. It went beyond that situation. It challenged the situation and boldly spoke the word of God into the situation. This Greek word lego also refers to an individual expression of speak. It means to break silence. It's breaking through. That breakthrough in her life, she said, if I but touch the hem of his garment. And this word means to ask and to bid, to boast, to call, to describe, to give out, to name, to put forth, to say, to show, to speak, to tell, to, to utter. Lego means to say continually, that Lego faith, say continually with authority, and it's defined by saying to speak absolutely. And this word means to affirm it, to maintain it, to teach, to exhort, to command and direct and to advise and to point out with words and to have an intent and mean to say it. And it also means to call by name, that name that is the word of God, his name, Jesus, to call by name, to speak out, speak of, and mention. So as we see that we're tapping in and touching the word of God, as we embrace Jesus, and as we embrace his name, we are embracing his word, and we are embracing him. So importantly, this word Lego means to say continually with authority to confess the word, his word that you have embraced and heard and have revelation of, and to read it, putting it in your ears, putting it in your eyes and putting it in your mouth and putting it in your heart. That word Lego means in more depth, continually with authority, according to the fixed system of God's word, to collect and gather it, to pick it out, to lay forth with this word in your life, to count it, to enumerate it, to recount it, to narrate it, to describe and to put word to word in speaking, joining words together. This word has such depth. It means to say and direct that discourse, not only when we use language orally, but also when we express ourselves in writing, we set forth in language, we make it plain, we express in words, and we say within ourselves. We have Lego faith. Lego also includes to speak consistently within yourself, to think within oneself, to think on these words. You know, the word of God says perfect peace we have when we set our mind on him, on his word, and to express this consistently within ourselves. So we can express in words and we can tell a thing to one another and we can reflect within ourselves and we can solemnly declare it. And we can affirm it within ourselves and we can meditate and insist on it and hold it and teach and speak and murmur his word consistently exhorting and advising and directing that Lego faith within us. And this gives a greeting to the expression to perform and bid him welcome to salute him. Let there be. This was the Lego word of God, the Lego faith of God. Let there be light and there was light. We can point out with words and intend what is said and mean to say it and say what we mean. 
So in closing, Lego means and goes so far to define itself as to call by a name and to call the name. Again, in Revelation 19, 13, it says, And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. It means clearly to speak out. As we boldly and clearly speak, we find our faith in action, our Lego faith in action. Reportedly and clearly with authority praying, we can find our faith in action. As we boldly and clearly step forth and move forward, we find our faith in action. Jesus, in answer to this woman's corresponding action of her faith, was immediate. And to her corresponding action of her words, he said this in Mark 5, 34. Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. This is the result of Lego faith. Your faith making everything whole, you have that peace and it is immediate in your life, whether you see it or not. Because this word here, Lego, defines that she said continuously, meaning she believed it before she saw it. See, Lego faith sees it and calls those things that be, that aren't. When you see it contrary, You can actually look by faith, that Lego faith, and believe it before you see it. Because faith is the evidence of things hoped for. See, Lego faith goes as this woman's example. She touched the hem of his garment. She touched the shepherd that's found in 10.7. Then Jesus said unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. The door is the shepherd. We have no lack and we can simply do what this woman did in Mark 5. She said, Lego, continually. She built with her words and she's given us a perfect example. We can build with our words. The word of God tells us that the power of life and death is in the tongue. What are we building? Are we building life or are we building something contrary? Our words are an expression of Lego faith. This woman with the issue of blood shows us the simple example of our faith. The phrase here where Jesus said, daughter, your faith has made you whole. Go in peace reveals to us that Lego faith and the simple steps of Lego faith. Number one, she heard. Number two, she continuously spoke. She prayed in authority and boldness. She declared she absolutely spoke Lego faith. Number three, she did it. She had corresponding action. Number four, she received. And number five, she told it and she continued speaking it. You know, as you move forward, embrace that Lego faith. He has brought this faith to you and he has given you the authority of his word. And when you speak his word and embrace his word, you are embracing him. His name is the word of God. You touch his word, you are touching him. You touch him, you are touching his word. Your faith comes by the hearing of the word of God. You can hear the word and grow in faith and your Lego faith can build beautiful, great things of God in your life. And what seems impossible, you will see as possible. For with God, all things are possible. And we touch the hem of his garment, the finished work of God, and the virtue and the power and the glory of God is imparted in our lives. And we can experience, taste, feel, see, and just express the manifestation of the blessing of God, everything he's promised. Father, right now, I pray that every person that has heard this podcast can experience that Lego faith, that they will hear your word and that they will see Jesus, that they are touching you. And as they touch you, they are touching the word. And as they touch the word, they are touching you. And I pray a desire in our hearts rise for a greater hunger and thirst for your word. And I thank you, Father, that you will follow your word with signs and wonders 
and you are supporting everything in your word with the covenant that you have with Jesus Christ, that shed blood and resurrection power of the Almighty. And I give you praise for it, and I thank you that you are working in our lives mightily with the marvelous works of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Pastor Kim is not only a screenwriter, director, and producer, she writes children's books and other publications. If you're interested in more of her Kix Media from Kix Ministries, check out our family faith-based feature films, Pastor Kim's blogs, and our many children's books and publications at kixtv.com.